201 East Oglethorpe Avenue. Now that's the Colonial Park Cemetery. That cemetery actually sits in between a Savannah Fire Department and a Savannah Police Department. And it's located in the historic district of Savannah. And this location, this cemetery is actually six acres to be exact, somewhere around six acres. And this was the city's primary burial ground for 103 years from 1750 through 1853. Uh, Colonial Park Cemetery was established by the Christ Church in 1750. And the Christ Church is a Episcopalian church that actually was, is actually located on 28 Bull Street that's in Savannah. And this burial ground is Savannah's oldest cemetery, but it's not the first cemetery because actually the first cemetery was off of Wright Square, bordered by York, Whitaker, and Oglethorpe Streets and Bull Streets as well. And this burial site actually laid to rest American Revolutionary War veterans, uh, veterans such as Samuel Elbert. Uh, he was a war soldier and a uh, governor of Georgia at the time and Joseph Clay a major in the Georgia line and the Revolutionary War and I believe this place is plenty haunted I know this cemetery actually sits in between a fire department and a police department and I know that they get some interactions uh, in between I tried to post a video of the police department and what they had to say but I was getting copyright restrictions so I'll try to link the the video in this in this description if I can also there are about 700 burial markers in the Colonial Park Cemetery but there's about 9,000 graves in total and the dimensions of the cemetery was used was really larger but it was pushed back in the 1896 to accommodate the streets and the sidewalks which borders Colonial Park. Now some notable historians that were buried in the cemetery, Button Gwinnett, he actually signed the Declaration of Independence but he was also known for actually being in a duel with LaShawn McIntosh in 1777 which resulted in his death with the gunfire uh, which eventually killed him and Button Gwinnett, he didn't actually die in the cemetery, he actually died in Thunderbolt, which was about five miles away from that location. Now, LaShawn McIntosh, born in 1725 and died in 1806, was a born military leader and strategist. He served with the American Revolution that took him from Florida all the way to Michigan, and he was a trusted subordinate to George Washington but he was known for shooting, uh, like, of course, like I said, Button and Gwinnett in 1777. Also another person that was buried in this cemetery, Archibald Bullock was a lawyer, soldier, and a statesman from Georgia during the American Revolution. And he would have actually would have signed the Declaration of Independence, but he had other plans. He decided to focus his efforts on the Georgia defense against Britain and he died mysteriously shortly before the conflict spread to the south but as far as his bloodline uh, his great great grandson was President Theodore Roosevelt and on a lot of these tombstones you might see the date 1820 for a lot of the people that was buried in here their death date and that was because of the yellow fever epidemic because the yellow fever happened in three occasions uh, the first year that it actually happened was in 1820 uh, where it killed over 60 people and like I said uh, they dedicated that Colonial Park Cemetery to the yellow fever victims as well I believe there's a, uh, a plaque there for them and yellow fever was a really bad a really bad disease including uh, black bloody vomit I believe in that sickness you was sick for like a few weeks until you actually died and I mean, you had nosebleeds, uh, gum bleeds, uh, very bad bowel movements, and just going into a coma, and also about that cemetery. Now, this 
cemetery was actually restored twice in 1967 the trustees garden club they took a restoration for the cemetery and also in 1990 the city of savannah began the began the preservation project to maintain the uh, cemetery's uh, headstones uh, tombstones and uh, just the landscape of this cemetery now what i think considers this place haunted because of all the history all of the uh yellow fever victims lying in this particular plot of area and also it was rumored that there were this area was a dueling grounds for people that was in savannah if people wanted had a dispute if they wanted to duel they would go to this uh area or a wall just south of the south wall and they would go here to duel and also about savannah a lot of places downtown areas a lot of cemeteries are actually built on top of other uh, burial spots. Like in other places in Savannah, you have a building and then some buildings are actually built on top of old slave burial grounds. There's a lot of places in Savannah like that. Well, really in the downtown area. And I got this footage when it was really raining. It was raining real bad yesterday. I got rained on. Uh, so much yesterday I got the best footage that I could get but also with this location um, it is also known that the Savannah uh, Police Department actually sits on the other side is actually haunted and the fire department is actually haunted too um, you know I can't really go inside of there and get footage like that and I got footage of other places in Savannah that's haunted, but feel free to make a suggestion what video or what location you want me to do next. I'm thinking about doing the Sorrel Weed House a little bit later on in the series because there's a lot of information about that. But feel free to get in that comment section and leave a suggestion of the next location that you would like for me to visit. But that's all for right now. It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and I'm out.